This is Twit. Who blinked? Uh, what can only be called wonderful and welcome news serviced in the middle of last week from the UK. Now, the short version is the UK appears to have blinked. And in the face of all secure messaging apps, and now, as we just recently covered, Apple taking their stand, which was the topic of last week's podcast, saying firmly, "Uh uh-uh, we're not doing this. Um, Everybody said they were going to pull their services from the UK rather than sacrifice the privacy of their users. Rather than compromising, you know, uh, in any way. The UK apparently said, oh, well, we never said that we wanted you to do that. Uh Uh-huh. Right. But of course, uh, nothing involving politicians and bureaucracies is ever clean and simple. And the details here are at least somewhat interesting. What first happened was that last Tuesday, the Financial Times was the one who broke the story. Um, And... Then the tech press jumped on it because this was big news. Nine to five max headline was future of iMessage safe in the UK as government backs down on encryption. Wired carried the headline, Britain admits defeat in controversial fight to break encryption. And their subhead was the UK government has admitted that the technology needed to securely scan encrypted messages sent on Signal and WhatsApp doesn't exist, weakening its controversial online safety bill. Computer World story began with UK rolls back controversial encryption rules of online safety bill. CyberScoop headlined their coverage, UK lawmakers back down on encryption busting spy claws. And InfoSecurity magazine's headline was, UK government backs down on anti-encryption stance. All right. Okay. So anyway, everybody gets the idea. This is what all the headlines were. Unfortunately, much as those were all attention commanding and welcome headlines, none of that was true. Well, or at least... They were all probably deliberate oversimplification and exaggeration, you know, clickbait, which predictably did not set well with the UK. They didn't, the the politicians there didn't like those headlines. So then the following day, last Thursday, we see follow up headlines such as UK tries to claim it hasn't backed down on encryption at all. And Reuters' headline was, UK has not backed down in tech encryption row, uh, row, row, minister says. And so anyway, here's what, the UK, uh, here, here's what Reuters explained, because their, their coverage is short and succinct. So London, September 7th, Reuters. Britain will require social media companies to take action to stop child abuse on their platforms and if necessary work to develop technology to scan encrypted messages as a last resort technology minister michelle donnellan said on thursday and we've talked about dear michelle in the past she's the one who's who's ahead you know in charge of this so Reuters said platforms, including Meta's WhatsApp and Signal, have been fighting Britain's online safety bill, which is currently being scrutinized by lawmakers because they say it could threaten the end-to-end encryption that underpins their messaging services. Junior Minister Stephen Parkinson appeared to concede ground to the tech company's arguments on Wednesday saying in Parliament's upper chamber that the Ofcom, that's their communications regulator, would only require them to scan content where technically feasible. Okay, now that's the first time anyone had heard that. Now, of course, and then Reuters reminds us that tech companies have said scanning messages at end-to-end encryption are fundamentally incompatible. Okay, so in other words, you know, not technically feasible, uh, 
So essentially, by admitting and facing reality, this junior minister, Stephen Parkinson, you know, set off a firestorm. Was the fire set deliberately? Did the senior minister set this up to have junior drop this and then hide? You know, maybe I'm being too cynical. I don't know. Reuters continues their coverage saying senior technology minister Michelle Donilon, however, denied the following day on Thursday that the bill had been watered down in the final stages before it becomes law. She told Times Radio, quote, we have not changed the bill at all. Okay, which doesn't seem to be true, but that's what she said. If there was a situation where the mitigations that the social media providers are taking are not enough. And, okay, we already know they won't be. She said, and if after further work with the regulator, they still cannot demonstrate that they can meet the requirements within the bill, then the conversation about technology around encryption takes place. Okay, huh? <laughs> well, what does that mean? Anyway, she said further work to develop the technology was needed, but added that government-funded research had shown it was possible. Okay, all of this is new information, right? So, okay. Um, so that's the official, you know, CYA story from the UK's senior technology minister. But that's not the whole story because the online safety bill actually was amended, despite the fact that Michelle Donilon just said it had not been changed at all, and she's desperately trying to obfuscate that fact. So here's the way Apple Insider explained what happened. They said, despite introducing a clause that means its online safety bill is no longer a concern for Apple, WhatsApp, or users, the UK government is insisting with a straight face that it's still exactly as tough on big tech as before. <laughs> on Wednesday, the UK, the UK Parliament debated an online safety bill that in its original form would have seen Apple, WhatsApp, Signal, and more shutter their messaging and social media services in the country. Bowing to that pressure, wrote Apple Insider, the UK regulator, Ofcom, introduced a face-saving clause that effectively stopped the country's nonsensical demands to break end-to-end -end encryption. Except the conservative government that was pushing for this against the advice of security experts and even an ex-MI5 head insists that it has not even blinked. As spotted by Reuters, UK technology minister Michelle Donilon told Times Radio the same thing I just shared. We haven't changed the bill at all. If there was a situation where the mitigations that the social media providers are taking was not enough, and if after further work with the regulator, they still can't demonstrate that they can meet the requirements within the bill, then the conversation about technology around encryption takes place. Anyway, I don't think anyone's ever going to listen to her or take her seriously again. But Apple Insider says Ofcom's amendment to the bill said that firms such as Apple would be ordered to open up their encryption only, quote, where technically feasible and where technology has been accredited as meeting minimum standards of accuracy in detecting only child sexual abuse and exploitation content, unquote. In other words, you know, uh, not really, but... We, you know, we had to say something, right? <laughs> so Apple <laughs> Insider opines saying, there is no technology today that will allow only the good guys to break end-to-end -end encryption. And there never will be, period. Consequently, they write, the Tory government can argue and is arguing that no word has been changed in the bill. Uh, but words have been added 
<laughs> and they neuter the entire non. Yeah, we didn't change anything. We didn't change anything. We just but we added a few more words uh, a there to the top. end. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they just kind of like oh, they and new as as Apple Insider says, they neuter the entire nonsensical and unenforceable plan. Okay, so that's the story, uh, and it's big news because of the critically important precedent that this sets for their coverage of this wired interviewed Signal's quite outspoken president, Meredith Whitaker, who we've also often quoted here. So here's what Wired wrote of what Meredith had to say. They said, Meredith Whitaker, president of the Signal Foundation, which operates the Signal Messaging Service, said, quote, it's absolutely a victory. It commits to not using broken tech or broken techniques to undermine end-to-end -end encryption, unquote. They, uh, and then Wired said, Whitaker acknowledges that, okay, it's not enough, that the law simply won't be aggressively enforced, but it's major. She said, we can recognize a win without claiming that this is the final victory. Then Wired continues saying the implications of the British government backing down, even partially, will reverberate far beyond the UK. Whitaker says security services around the world have been pushing for measures to weaken end-to-end -end encryption and there is a similar battle going on in Europe over CSAM where the European Union commissioner in charge of home affairs has been pushing similar unproven technologies. Whitaker said quote it's huge in terms of arresting the type of permissive international precedent that this would set. The UK was the first jurisdiction to be pushing this kind of mass surveillance. It stops that momentum, and that's huge for the world, unquote. And yes, I believe this is authentically a huge deal. No one has any real problem with space-saving legislation being created to allow the politicians to tell their CSAM activists that they now have powerful new legislation on the books which will, the moment it can be shown to be technically feasible to do this with the required level of accuracy, compel all encrypted messaging providers to protect the children. And those politicians can truthfully state that this was the strongest legislation they were able to obtain, because indeed it was. You know, we know that this will in no way pacify Sarah Gardner, whom we talked about last week, after she threatened Tim Cook at Apple with her forthcoming pressure campaign, which starts this week, to compel Apple to perform client-side scanning for known CSAM imagery. But Sarah appears to be a lost cause. She has no problem demanding whatever concessions to everyone else's security and privacy might be needed to even incrementally offer improved protection for children. Everyone is for improving child protection, but there's no way to do that without compromising everyone's security and privacy, including the children's. So, the free world appears to have just taken the first big step toward the resolution of the encryption dilemma. It's going to be interesting now to see what the European Union does. You know, maybe they'll also just put the same sort of caveat into their legislation and everyone can continue ignoring it, which would be wonderful. And then does that end up trickling down here into the U.S. as the U.S. government tries to pursue, you know, a no encryption policy? I'm, you know, what, what we see with things like the EU and the GDPR, annoying as that GDPR is, um, it, it, it's helping us, I think, yeah. and U.S. politicians to say, oh, yeah, I guess, you know, Privacy really is good. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe we should have some of that here, too. It's at least so, forcing more of a conversation and actual you yeah. know, taking a look yeah, at, at these issues. 
Yeah. yeah. And all of the encryption providers can say when the U.S. tries to do this, hey, you know. Over there. The, the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Over there, they, they, they worked it out. They're okay with this. So yeah. just cool your jets. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. ACI's new cyber skills is training for everyone on your team. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit. Twit listeners will receive at least 20% off or as much as 65% off an IT Pro Enterprise Solution Plan. The discount based on the size of your team when you fill out the form. 